Bebe, it's an honor to talk to you. I got to speak to you during the premiere of With Love last year. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. yeah. You, you you keep busy. I mean, the documentary says it. You, you're nonstop. Yeah, it's good. You just got to keep it moving. You know, you can't wait for Hollywood to come to you. You got to become Hollywood. That's so sure. true. That's so true. Mm -hmm. And from watching the documentary, it sounds like, you know, for you, it, this this doesn't feel like work. It's the, the one hobby you love. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I love, my hobby is life. That's why it's life is art, is that it's been, I've been on a, an incredible ride my whole life. And then being that I met my wife, 55, next month is uh, 55 years, it's going to be. And uh, we've only been apart 22 days, so we get to do everything together and it's incredible. So what's the secret? It just, uh, it's just the luck, the luck of the draw and uh, loving to be with each other and knowing that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the same for everybody. It's a, it's a, you got to fight for the right to party. <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> that was, what's his face? Uh, uh, with the uh, with uh oh god Taylor, uh, uh, anyway Kelsey, <laughs> with the football that he he yelled that out. But no, it's life is good, and if you can keep it, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? So, how do you take something? You know, if you don't take it personal, unless it's something really good and a smile. The smile is everything to me. We got to see in the documentary, like everything from, you know, the beginning of your career. What was it like for you to see everything unfold? It was great. It's been 11 years in the making. So we got to see different iterations of it over the years. Uh, and so we had different, different versions. And, and uh, so now to have this and now accompanied by my book, that's the same title and, and, and just more of the story to it. And how to get it to uh, into the schools uh, so that the students can see, hey, here's somebody that's been around for for a long time doing it. I'll be eighty this year, and I'm not, you know, I don't feel like an eighty year old. You know, I'm, I've got a lot of energy and I work out, and I'm still doing it. I'm going to Chicago to do the United States Hispanic uh, uh, Leadership Institute. And I'm showing my documentary. I'm doing my one-man show, El Ruco Chuco Cholo Pachuco, workshops, and, and uh, the keynote speech. So it's it's just it's great getting the recognition now and getting uh, hired to come in and do schools and 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 you know talking to different corp companies and stuff. Doing that mm -hmm. that's that's a lot of fun to inspire people. I did not know that you're a fan of. El Cine de Oro Mexicano. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what I grew up on, you know, from the 40s, you know, 50s. And my mother would take us to the movies. And then I, I, I lived in Mexico for a couple of years before I came to, to California. Or I say to Hotwood. I was in California before that because I was in the Marines for six months, reserves. So I was in Camp Pendleton. What, what, where are you from? I'm in L.A., but I'm from Mexico City. So I was oh, excited yeah. to see that part. Oh man, that was fabulous time. 67, 68, 69 in Mexico City. It was fantastic. Wow. Um, so tell me about the your your career in improv. How what is it about it that comes so natural for you? It's that the the reality is is that that's what all of us are doing every day, is we're improvising. We don't know what somebody's gonna say. You don't know how I'm gonna answer. Uh, then your question that you have written for me, you you change up depending on what I say, and 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 your boss says something or whatever it is that you sell, you're not selling yourself. Uh, you are selling yourself. You're not selling a pro a product. You're selling something that somebody else needs. So that's when you get good. That's what improv is. Is what what do you want? That's that's what I want to. In, in order for us to connect, is I got to know about you and want to know about you, and not just uh, pretend, you know, to really 
be interested. Wow, that that's that that answer you just blew my mind. Why that? I mean, you know, but you know that you do that every day yourself. But you thought you were the only one that knew it, huh? No, I I, did, I didn't realize that that is part of life. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. It's how and how not to think take things personal if your if your boss asks you to do something, and and uh, and you take it personal in the wrong way, uh, something that he asked. But if you don't take it in a bad way, even if it's something that that could sound like you did something wrong before and now you better do it like this now, is that if you don't take it like that, then you don't feel it. Then then what you're going to give back is going to be great because it's, that's, I, I go back, to, it's the ancestors, you know, it's your grandparents, your great grandparents your, that you knew, your uncles and aunts that gave you that. That's where my strength, I had incredible family. Not everybody does. But but no, even if you don't, even if you're an orphan, there's in the DNA, we have incredible, incredible history that's there. And man, go. We're not as tall as we want to be or, or as thin or whatever, you know, but but you're you, we're amazing. Everybody's amazing right where they are, right? You know, you just got to get just know it and get better, work harder. We always talk about the projects that's like everyone remembers you for, which we already know. But what was that project as a struggling actor when you were starting? The one project that was like, this is what I'm meant to be. Oh, well, it, uh, see, they, they, I grew up with the Cine de Oro. When we moved from our first uh, Mexican and uh, African American neighborhood to uh, to the gringo neighborhood, a doctor lived next door. So at three years of age, I jumped up on my God, godfather's boxing ring, and that's where the, the stage actor was born. And at six years of age, when we moved to the new place, the doctor next door filmed uh, his daughter's party that they invited us to. And a month or so later, he showed it in, in the backyard, and I saw myself on film at, at six, right? Uh, on the on the projector, so that was a, I was a movie actor at six, in my in my heart and soul and spirit. I, oh, I'm there. I'm an, I'm a, I'm already in the movies, like I had seen the other movies. It was no difference to me, you know. Even though I was just standing around doing just looking at the camera or something, but that mentality. I mean, I had it that. And I knew that that's what I liked and that I liked to do. So everything, I always had a camera on me from then on, as far as I was concerned, you know, because I was always performing as if though I was being filmed without, without really knowing that, just in retrospect, just knowing that how much I loved it and that that's, that was, that was a, a cool thing to happen and be able to to live and understand. Of all your projects, is there one that you would love to re relive again? The, the the one that happened when I, my first film, my first movie movie, was in Corpus Christi in 1964, 60 years ago. I was 19, and I was the lead in, as a bullfighter. And I was in the rings in, in the, in the uh, bullfighting ring in Nuevo Laredo. Where my family was from Laredo, but I had seen Cantinflas like seven years before when I was 12 at that same boxing, at that same uh, uh, bullfighting ring when he did his, you know, clowning around with a, with a bullfighting and then come to find out. And then there I was seven years later starring in a movie. It got destroyed in a hurricane. So I never got to see it. So in that sense, uh, that would have been interesting to to have. I had it in my heart and soul, but for other people to have seen it and say, "Wow, he he did his first movie when he was 19," and then there's an extra in Mexico, a little bit. But everything was 
everything I did was uh, kind of performance oriented because uh, that's, yeah, that's just the way I like to, to live and present life, my life. And and you don't you don't stop. There's a project they have coming out, Beautiful Darkness with Emilio Rivera. Can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, that was that was a uh, um, it was a short, and and uh, I I play his his father, who they didn't they had a terrible relationship with. So I don't want to uh, uh, give you the 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 whole story because it kind of tells what happens uh, to me. And and through him, but it was great. I know Emilio for for a while, but it was great to work with him. I had never worked with him, so that was nice. And then I have another one I did was called Abuelo, that I was the lead in, uh, with um, with um, Isabella Alvarez. She was on Euphoria. Do you know who she is? She's a great actress, really good actress. And then another one that we just shot. It was like 27 minutes, but they're cutting it down to 15. They wish upon where it's mostly just me. Uh, and it's it's really, really good. And now the new one that I'm going to do, uh, Look in My Eyes in El Paso, where I play a psychologist, uh, who it's kind of my story in, in the sense that I'm an artist. I've been through cancer. I do my improv workshops. So it's my personality in in uh, working with children on the spectrum and other other kind of diseases, uh, so you work with tremendous high profile actors. Is there one you have yet to work with that's on your list? I really don't. I really don't have a list per se. You know because uh, it's all pretty much the same for me. Uh, it's whoever. Everybody's just as important as everybody else. Yeah, of course. Yeah, if you're gonna do a movie with Tom Cruise, or, or you know, uh, I was gonna say uh, Meryl Streep, but I work with Meryl Streep. Uh, but so there are bigger projects with more money that have more, you know, more eyes on them. But this is the people that I work with that come out in in, in my documentary is. The importance of why I think people need to see it is to, to uh, order my book uh, uh, on my website, pepeserna.net, and to watch it when it comes out on Amazon or, or uh, Apple TV on the 21st, and to spread the word, and then to write a review. If, 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 if 250 people write a review on it, like that first week, the algorithms jump and it's as if though there were two million people watching it that's that's the importance of that kind of thing and that's what our audience doesn't realize is how much more because we we go to the movies more than anybody we eat more popcorn have more drinks eat more candy buy all the paraphernalia in at the football game the baseball game the hats t-shirts Everything we spend the most money, but there's nothing about us. None of our stories are being told. Yeah, some of the stories are being told, but it's usually the the, the same old tired stuff, you know, about and gangs and and drugs and and uh, it's our history. I mean, how old were, you must have been very very young when you left Mexico City. I was. I was seven. But have you gone back? Lots of times. I love it. So, yeah, I mean that that. That richness, you know, that's the world, you know, and and to show, I have a show El Rupo Chupo Cholo Pachuco, that that is uh, that I want to really do as a film, and it's all my characters, but I want to have, and it's, I go back thirty thousand years to the first Chicano born after the Ice Age, thirty thousand years ago, and it's to cut it the when, and then it was me, my my father cuts the umbilical cord and and blesses it to the four corners so that I always know where I came from, Mother Earth. And then the regal eagle flies out from a rain cloud and catches my, my umbilical cord and looks me dead in the eye and spreads its wings and flies down to me. And while he's flying to me, the umbilical cord turns into Quetzalcoatl, the plume serpent. So they brush me with their feathers and infuse me with their spirit. And so that's the spirit 
that we all have, that serpent evil warrior that that we have within us, you know, with uh and, and that's the power of wow, man, that's that's my spirit guide. That's who's that's who's guiding me is, you know, our ancestors. But it's all about that. It's just and then so I changed it. I just changed it for this next performance that I'm doing in Chicago to make it that is I, I was the serpent eagle warrior, but now I made it that it's I have a twin sister that's born with me. And so it's the male and female, because then uh, uh, Romulus and Remus and in, in, in uh, the Roman, uh, the, the the twins, the men, and, and uh, the Mexico, I forget, Sotli and Quetzalcoatl are the twins that grow, but it's always the men. I said, well, how, how do they procreate? <laughs> how do we get more? people into this world as a woman. So I knew the importance. I think I was born a feminist. So I wanted to have a woman to be there with my character to have the same, it's the same power. It's the same, we're human beings. And, but to give it to the young, to the young ladies and say, hey, no, well, our spirit guides are, are both male and female. Brilliant. Well, I can't wait. Thank you so much for the time with you. And yes, um, I am going to recommend, highly recommend your film. Thank you very much. And I'd love to meet you sometime. I hope so too. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care. Thank you again.